Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Slasher Scotty. I am your host, Scotty McCoy, and boy, do I have a surprise for all of you. I have on Zoom with me right now, Andy, let me see if I pronounce this right, Heater? Header. Header, okay. Yeah. Andy Header, <laughs> and he is a professional wrestler um, based in, out of Pennsylvania, um, and I have him right now on Slasher Scotty. How you doing, Andy? I'm doing good. Uh, real good. I, I just got done work a little bit ago. And I got nice. this all set up. I had to download the Zoom app because I had it on my iPad for <laughs> and I went to my phone. So, uh, and I got a pretty sweet backdrop here with the belts. So I absolutely love impressive. the belts. Just look at the belts. <laughs> I absolutely uh, love the belts. And the I love the World Heavyweight and, of course, the Eagle Wing belt. They're, those are oh, the classics. Everybody loves the, what, what, the, the Bret Hart one. I, that's what I call it. Oh, but, nice. Uh, yes, the, the I didn't even, I didn't even notice that was, that's what that was at first. For, I'm part yeah. of way, but yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I got the ECW... The Wind nice. Eagle WWF, the one that Hulk Hogan, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels had, mm-hmm. the one that Steve Austin would have. And then we got yeah. the big gold. And then what's that one right there? Uh, the IWGP United States. Yes. Yes. Nice. That is so yeah. awesome. Titles in my, my house that I've only been in in one month. I've been living here. So got a new house. <laughs> yeah, we were supposed to have the interview. Uh, I think it was around that time you were getting ready to move. I'm like, yeah, well, let's move it up and everything. Because my dad passed away. So I'm like, yeah, yeah okay. well, let's, let, we, we had a couple of postponements, but we got this going now. So um, so mm-hmm. I'm assuming they're replica belts. Yes. Yeah, there's, there's, there's no real gold up there. There's the replicas. But they look very nice. nice. So yes. someone comes in, are they real? Yeah, sure. You know? <laughs> That's awesome. So what made you want to get into professional wrestling, and where did you start training at? Okay, so what? No, that's my cat joke. I don't know say. Let me. He's gonna make a little running right here. This is oh, he's Jabroni. so cute. Yeah, Jabroni. His name is. Uh, oh, nice. uh, so, Perfectly so named. Me, yes. <laughs> so what made me want to get into wrestling was I would see it when I was small. I, I started watching when I was like six or seven, somewhere around there. And all I can remember is a six-man tag match with uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Nice. That's uh, that's literally all I can remember. It nice. was WWF, obviously, because I lived in Northeast Pennsylvania. So. If we got WCW or NWA at the time, I had no idea. I was just completely unaware of it. So it was just WWF, and I watched that. And, and I always want to do it. People are like, oh, well, you're too small. I mean, of course, in the 80s, when everyone's six four or bigger, you know, yeah. 300 pounds. And, uh, you know, in high school, people are like, you can't wrestle. You're too small. You're skinny, you know? And uh, when I was like, I, I started fairly late. Like, I was 24 when I started training, just because I didn't know where to go or who to talk to. Right. I didn't know anyone in the business. Like, what I know now and right. if I would have known a, a fraction then, it would be it would have been so easy, but I didn't know <laughs> a soul. How old are you so, now? Well, uh, I am 39. How about it? Oh, wow. Okay. I look for, for 39. I hope, right? <laughs> but um, <laughs> uh, so I, I, I thought, I can I can do this. I feel I can do it. I want to do this. And even though I'm just a manager or even a referee, but I want to be a wrestler. Uh, so I went to uh, a CZW ROH double shot show at the, at the ECW Arena. <laughs> Yeah. And I seen some of the guys, and I'm like, well, if they can wrestle, and they're my size, then I certainly can wrestle. So I eventually got hooked up with some guys that were training in Jersey Shore, Pennsylvania, of all places, just in an airplane hangar, no heat, no uh, air conditioning, there's barely electricity. And that's where I got the my, my start really there, and it broke, like, kind of cut my teeth in learning anything about wrestling. And then I eventually would make my way to the Chicago Wrestle Factory in Philly with Mike Quackenbush and Claudio Castellone, better known now as Cesaro. So yeah, that's, that's, that's basically how my start came about. That's awesome. That's awesome. So have you faced any guys from the WWE past or present? Yes. Um, uh, Hardcore Holly, the rest of Bob nice. Holly. And, how was and, he? He, he was, I was a little bit afraid. So I was like, oh, Hardcore Holly, you don't want to, yeah. he's a tough guy. He's going to sniff yeah. you, you know? And uh, he was really nice to me. So, yeah. I mean, he did his thing where I remember he was like draping on the ropes and pull your mm-hmm. feet up and it like, kicks you yeah. like in the gut. Kind of hit me a little low, but I'm like, oh my God. So uh, I wrestled him. I, I did wrestle uh, Cesaro at an indie match right before he signed with WWE. Um, Blue Mini, uh, James Ellsworth, I tagged with him, wrestled him, tagged with him again recently. Um, Blue Mini, I said Blue Mini. Um, I think who else? Uh, one of the doinks, I think it was Ray Apollo. I don't, it was yeah. one of them because there was like six doinks. Yeah. Um, Gilbert two times. Nice. So about that, and wrestled nice. Gilbert, which if you would have told fourteen year old me, I'd be like, "What? What? Gilbert?" Right. Um, Sanjay Dutt, uh, who's now a backstage person in uh, WWE, and obviously TNA was his big run. Yeah, wrestled him. 
I'm trying to think who else. There's a lot of people that have Hernandez. It's in, uh, I don't know if he's currently in Impact, TNA guy. Okay. In, uh, he's with the Latin American Exchange, right? Yes, yes. Yes. That Hernandez. Um, I'm trying to think. I'm drawing a blank. Uh, like Tessa Blanchard, and I don't know if people talk about her too much, but <laughs> some yeah. uh, work with her. Um, I, know, I know I'm forgetting some, but there's more. That's um, awesome. Yeah, but then I've, I've met like tons of guys over the years just from being shows like Ricky Martin. He was a really cool guy. Al Snow, Jerry Lawler, you yeah. know, all, all the old guys too. We used to, I used to be in uh, Lancaster Championship Wrestling, LCW, which was really good, obviously based in Lancaster, PA. And they would bring in Bret Hart and uh, Kurt Angle, obviously just, just to sign autographs and stuff. They would get like a thousand people and fill up the Lancaster yeah. host. So I met a lot of guys there. Devon was there. Roddy Piper was there. Nice. Um, Tommy Dreamer, Taz, Rhino. So it, it was really cool wrestling for there. Fortunately, they're out of business now. But, yeah, so. that's awesome though. And like Hardcore Holly, was he? Was he like? Did he like stiff you? Is he one of those tough wrestlers in the ring? Because if you watch him, like say on Tough Enough, like he, yeah. was, he was pretty tough. Remember when he beat the hell out of that one kid for being yes. stupid? No, yes. like, that's what the word was. Harvey Holly is a tough guy. You know, he'd yeah. watch out in there. But he was really nice. He was professional. And then afterwards, he he uh, he said that he liked everyone in the match. I think it was like, it was either a tag. I think it was a six-man tag. Like, me and two other guys versus Harvey Holly and two other guys. Nice. So uh, he really was happy. And uh, he just hit me a little low. But, you know, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking you weren't wearing a cup. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I did not, and uh, he didn't, he didn't mean it. So, but he was very yeah. nice, and I'm sure it's not the Harper Holly from, you know, right. 1999. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, uh, do you, which wrestler um would be your dream opponent to have a match against? Hmm. Well, I, I, there's a couple. Uh, probably top of the list would be now Brian Danielson, what his old name was, not Daniel Bryan for those people, because yeah. I was I first seen him in Ring of Honor back in the day. I was like, this guy is so good. He is awesome. And I bought a shirt. So I still have my American Dragon Brian Danielson shirt from ROH from 2008. I don't know. Okay. Him, uh, Kazuchika Okada from New Japan. Okada is awesome. And then probably say Kenny Omega, because Kenny Omega top of the food chain right now. Yeah. And then, um, I mean, there's, there's tons of people. Uh, Jericho, just because he's Chris Jericho. You know? So right. there's a lot of people. And you know, it would be people are like, oh, why, why do you want this match? But I, I would really like to wrestle John Cena. I think that would be fun and it'd be easy. Would be. And it's John Cena. Like I was I'm not gonna wrestle Hulk Hogan or Warrior right. Macho Man. So but I can wrestle John Cena. So yeah, There's absolutely. Some. So do you still watch WWE and do you watch AEW? Which one do you prefer over the other? And how do you think both products currently kind of are? I I think AEW is the far better product right now. The more entertaining show, Dynamite and now Rampage on Friday. Uh, I do watch almost everything. Um, Raw has been. I mean, as of late, the like, like last night's was actually pretty good, and the week before was a little bit better, and SmackDown was good, but before that was not so hot. And yeah. uh, everyone, everything that like you want out of wrestling, AEW is giving you. And now you got CM Punk there, and you got uh, Daniel well, Brian Danielson, and then Ruby Soho came there. So right. uh, Dynamite is, I, I just enjoy that more. I mean, there's good wrestling on both, but like overall, I think AEW is more entertaining and the, the better product. I mean, there's great wrestlers like Seth Rollins, Roman's great. But mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of times it's it's a chore to sit through uh, yeah. uh, three hours. Like, it is. It really is. Like it's like I think if it was three hours back when it was in the late '90s, early 2000s, the Attitude Era, I think we, it would have been easier to go through. But nowadays, I, I don't. I can't. I can't sit through three hours. It's ho- I find it hard, like a chore. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. shouldn't have to make it make it a chore to watch a show and enjoy it. No, no. It should it should fly by. Like you should look yes. at the clock and be like, oh man, it's almost over like aw a lot of times i look and I'm like oh it's 9 49 already like this is right. almost over that sucks but raw yeah. you're like oh we got two and a half hours left and like, oh, exactly i know it's and rough. i mean here's here i guess would be a good example like i i when i i wanted to go see the movie cruella and i'm thinking oh but the movie's two and a half hours long it's gonna be yeah. a long time to sit in a theater but I'm like, oh, I really want to see. She's my favorite Disney villain, whatever, whatever. So I went to the theater and that movie flew right by. I couldn't believe how quick it was over because I was entertained. That's yeah. how like a wrestling show should be. You should be entertained. You shouldn't have to look at your watch and be like, oh, there's like an hour left or uh, when is this yeah. over? You know, you shouldn't have to feel that way. Like it should be entertaining all the way through. I, I, I agree 100%. Yeah. If you look, if you are experiencing something, a movie, wrestling show, whatever, and then it's like, it's almost over and you want more, then mission accomplished yeah. and also cruella was very good i just watched it recently 
Yeah, it actually, it was, it surprised me. I, I didn't, I, these live actions, they, I mean, some of them have been good, some of them have been hit or misses, but I thought this one was uh, actually, I was relatively surprised with how good it was. Yeah, I, uh, I expect nothing. I'm not the biggest Disney person, but uh, we uh, watched it for a nerd podcast I'm on, uh, Cheap Plug, okay. not going high school. Um, nice. So we were going to review it. We're talking about that then. <laughs> okay, yeah, I was, I was going to watch it. And uh, I, I was like, ah, I don't expect my watching. I'm like, you know what? I like this. Emma Stone, she's beautiful, but I liked her. I liked, uh, uh, what was his name? Artie. I thought he was a really good yeah. character. Her two cronies were cool. So, yeah, yeah very good movie. I really enjoyed it. I'm really excited to see what they do with the sequel to that prequel. Yeah, because it, <laughs> it, it, they did babyface her, you know? She's like the good guy in it, you know? So, yeah. I, and my friends didn't like that so much. And I'm like, I, I like it. I thought it was a different take on it. I, it was something that I didn't expect. I don't want to see a movie that I already saw as an animation or as a live action in the past with Glenn Coast. Like, I want to see something different. Give me something yeah. different. Yeah, because if it's the same thing, shot for shot, like they said Lion King was, it was like, oh, what's the point? Oh, it's right. live action, but it's exactly the same, so I know what happens. Exactly. So it, it really was enjoyable. So um, I guess what is the hardest part about being a professional wrestler and what is the easiest part about being a wrestler? Ooh, that, that's two questions. I never got what is the easiest part. The, it, the easiest part would be it's fun, I guess. And just, I don't know. Uh, let's see, the hardest part would probably be, I would say, staying in shape and keeping your uh, cardio up, which I'm pretty good at. So not, yeah. not to brag again, but uh, that'll probably be the hardest part, staying in shape. And then and then actually getting to the shows, because sometimes they're far away. I tend not to drive too far, but I mean, some of these guys drive like 10 hours, and that's like, that, that, yeah. that's just, it's mind-blowing to drive that far for a show, and then be like, well, I have to drive back. Like, I usually work on Sunday, so it's kind of hard for me to mm-hmm. drive a couple hours and then do the show and then drive back and go to bed real quick and get up and go to work the next day. But yeah. uh, that's why keeping yourself in shape and the travel, um, it actually learning the wrestling, I think, is not that hard. I mean, different people uh, learn at different speeds, but, uh, you know, with different things, too. Like, some people could learn the ropes better than taking a bump or learn to jump off the top rope better than somebody else, you know, at different times. So that's probably the hardest. The, the easiest, I, I think, is just uh, having fun and getting to yell whatever you want. And uh, I really like designing my gear. I design all my own gear. I don't make it, but I design it all. So I think that's fun. But then if you don't have creativity, then that's not too easy. Nice. But that's probably the easiest for, for me anyway. Nice. So when you actually set, like when you start, like say you're booked in a mess, I'll just say with Harker Holly, at, you mm-hmm. know, this show or whatever. And uh, are, like, do you actually plan it out with him? Uh, do you plan it? Do you just call it when you're in, in the middle of the ring during the match? How do you like prepare for it? Uh, sometimes the old school guys will say call it and some people uh, will say call it. it's very rare nowadays most people are brought up now to uh, plan everything out like every yeah. little thing I mean sometimes it's just like they structure like here's the beginning and they plan the middle and then the finish and then the mid like in between is whatever but uh, I, I kind of like to just do a little bit and then like I'm going to hit this and this and then you, that, like, it's all that makes sense to the, the right. story and match what you're trying to uh, right. you know the story you're trying to tell but uh it's, it's a little both. I, I, I seem to see more people planning and calling or planning all their spots and uh, right. the whole match out and rather than just calling the ring. I have done that. And that's that like, easy because it's like, as long as you're confident and you know what yeah. you're doing, like, you can go in there and call and like, oh, whatever. You know, you don't have to remember right. a single thing. So, you know, yeah. rather than okay, you do this and then I do this and then I'm going to whip you off and then you reverse. And like, it's a lot sometimes, but some people yeah. really like that. You know, like they always said DDP was meticulous like that. Him and Macho Man would plan every single little thing out. Whereas other people are just like, hey, call it in the ring, brother. <laughs> you know? Right. And I don't know if you listen to Busted Open on uh, Sirius XM, but uh, Bully Ray always said the most important part of doing a match is actually telling the story. Like mm-hmm. having the psychology and, you know, telling that story to the fans. Because there's nothing worse than having a match and, like, and it doesn't make sense story-wise. Like, you know. Yeah. Like, it's, especially, like, if you're just going out there. And, like, some places, like, if you did ROH opener, and they, they kind of want a super indie, then yeah, you want to go out there and big bang boom with the moves. Right. But like, if you're in a feud and then you hate each other and you go out there and you start the match and you're both locked up, it's like, oh, I hated him. Why right? punch in his face? You know, like, or, you know, or right. vice versa. Like that. It has to make sense to what's going on, like with the feud or if it's the first meeting or, right. you know, two faces or whatever. So yeah, it, it's kind of, you have to know the story you want to tell, even if it's just something simple, you know, like I right. want a title shot because I think I'm better, you know? Right, exactly. So when you're, say, booked for a match, how do you prepare for the match? And what is, like, your training regimen to get ready for said match? Um, so usually I, I don't talk to the guy at all until I 
see him at the show. Uh, the, I, I have the like my set moves like I like to do, and then like whatever the promoter the booker will say, what what kind of thing, match they want, what kind of finish they want. I, I do wait for the show and couple of all that, and then not other than that, like just normal going to the gym. I usually go like three or four times a week, and then uh, yeah, I don't do much cardio, but I do have uh, very high cardio from being in the ring, and so yeah. I, don't, I don't like to run because running is boring, and like running on a treadmill, like, Ugh, I can't, I can't stand that. Right. You know, I would much rather you know do manual labor for three hours than run on a treadmill for fifteen minutes. Yeah, but uh, so, yeah, just just going to the gym and just that, uh, like like recently I I slimmed down like uh in uh, March of last year, I was like, oh, man, I look, I look fat. I need to lose some weight there. So I cut almost 30 pounds. So I was like right around 194-ish, 90 foot around there. Now I'm like 164 to 165, sometimes a little bit lower and higher. So, yeah, yeah so that's that's what I do. You just go to the gym and just, I don't do nothing crazy. I'm not like, you know, CrossFit or not like, there's just normal right. exercise and just uh, not eating a whole lot, you know, and then zero sugar soda. Well, I have a regular soda, like one day, one, one time a day, I have a, a regular soda of iced tea, and that's like the zero sugar ones. But some are very, very tasty now. So right, yeah. So do you have like, do you like to watch your what you eat and like all that stuff? Like have a proper diet and all that. Like I don't have a planned out like okay at seven o'clock I'm gonna eat this, and then like Monday is this chicken, and then two not like that. I just I don't eat as much. I try to watch what I do. Although for lunch every day, like when I get done work, I eat a can of tuna and a cup of peanuts. <laughs> I really like peanuts. So right. that, that's probably like my most, you know, uh, what would you call that planned out regimen meal. Okay. And then like uh, during the, the breakfast, I usually don't have a full breakfast unless I'm off. So I just have like a little protein bar or something like that. Okay. And then for dinner, a, a normal meal. And then I have a little snacks here and there, but I don't try not to gouge myself unless I'm like at the buffet or the beach or something like that. So right. just kind of watch me. Like I could eat six seven donuts in one sitting if i wanted to i'm like let's just have one or maybe you know maybe two right. but probably one. right see i'm not a wrestler by any means but uh i uh i i that's where i struggle like i eat a lot of junk or i drink a lot of mm -hmm. soda or whatever or i'll i i, I eat a lot but I'll, i eat a lot at night like oh okay yeah. i won't eat breakfast i usually don't eat lunch but i'll eat dinner and i'll eat dinner at like eight nine o'clock at night Oh, okay yeah a lot of people say about the like eating late like yeah. i don't know how much that really does I, like to you know because they say you can't burn it all off and stuff like that yeah. like as long as you're not like eating at like midnight and then <laughs> right. it's going to bed. but sometimes you have to so yeah, yeah. i just say like yeah, like when you think about like what, what you're going to eat meal wise uh you know if you're a burger and fries then just just that don't do two burgers and fries just do a right. burger and fries or if you want to do two burgers then that's, that's just that you know like so that's right. why i try to like balance it out like, I don't count the carbs exactly because that's just too much for me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not that good at math. So, yeah. you know, I just try and, like, figure it out. Like, if you have one piece of pie, right. like, that's better than eating the whole pie or half a pie. So, right. you know, two exactly. slices of pizza. Like, like kind of know your limits. And if you want to ever cut weight, just take whatever you eat normally and just try to half it. Like, you know, yeah. so you did eat two hamburgers and fries. How about one burger and fries? And you right. will notice the difference after time. And, like, with zero sugar sodas, like Dr. Pepper Zero is very good. Like, I didn't think it, like years ago, diet sodas were horrible. And most diet sodas are still pretty <laughs> horrible. But the zero sugar ones are good. Like, zero sugar Mountain Dew is nice. almost as close. Uh, Coke just came out with the zero sugar. Well, they redid this zero sugar, and it's very good. So, nice. if you ever want to cut weight, that's what I did. And, like, it worked for me. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so, I guess for those unfamiliar about you and about your wrestling career, can you tell them uh, which titles have you held in the past and if you are currently a champion? Okay, yeah. So I'll, I'll start right off with uh, PPW, which is uh, in uh, Pennsylvania here. They run on Broadhead, so I am the current WYLN TV. So that's uh, nice. the local uh, TV champion, Hazleton. They used to run in Hazleton, but they, the school has weird rules with Corona and stuff. So now they're in Broadhead, so Pennsylvania. So I do have the TV title there. Um, in the Valor Championship Wrestling, I'm the Primus Champion, and no, I don't know what that means, but I do have that title as well, and that's only the only two current titles. I did have the Outbreak title before, uh, in Outbreak Wrestling, which I just wrestled for Hamburg, and uh, Earl Hebner was the referee, so there you go. Nice. Yeah, it was really awesome. cool. He, he is 72, and he still gets around and moves like, like he's a young guy. Like, yeah, he's, he's been in it since the 80s, at least. Yes, because he yeah. was an NWA even back then. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, getting off a uh, subject there. What was a rambling? Oh, from that? any past oh, championships? Yes. Wow. 
<laughs> and so, uh, yeah, uh, then Grand Slam Wrestling used to run in, uh, um, like, Scranton area. We were in um, like Old Forge, right around there, uh, music. I had uh, the Adrenaline title, the Tag Team Championship, and the Heavyweight title there. Nice. So, yeah, there, and then I had, like, PCWA, United States title, uh, a bunch of years, ACW that uh, used to run in, like, Denver, PA area, Twisted Tate ran it, it's, hasn't really come back since Corona did one show, but because he sells a lot of stuff online and does a little bit, makes a little bit more money than rent shows and it's much nice. easier. I did have uh, the, the Cruiserweight title there and Tri State title and the tag titles there. So nice. I've had a, a bunch of like the, you know, the, the mid card titles, you'd say a few tag team titles and uh, one or two heavyweight titles in my day. That's awesome. So at these indie events, you know how like we're the WWE and AEW. Um, first of all, I want to say that when pe- it irritates me when people say that wrestling is fake because it is not fake, it is scripted. Mm-hmm. Um, but with the indie promotions, is it the same way as it is running the WWE where like matches are pre- like pre-planned and they have like the winner and all that stuff? And yes. do they determine if you if you win the championship and all that? Yeah, for for the most part, it's all kind of exactly the same. A lot of times in indie shows, guys can't make it, guys cars break down, whatever, they, they right. don't want to come. So they'll switch people around, switch matches around. So you might be winning and then you lose, or depending if they switch, excuse me, uh, your match around. But yeah, there's like stories. I mean, you can't really do the same story because, you know, once a month, once every two months shows, as compared to every week, you can't yeah. really have the same story. So it's more just, ah, you're the champion, I want the title. Right. So, but yeah, they usually do have it all planned out, who they're, Champs are if they're going to lose, uh, and kind of what they want for a finish. Hey, we want a disqualification. We want to, you know, count out, or uh, we want you to win dirty. You know, if you're a heel. So right. yeah, it's almost the same, just on a smaller level. I tell people, uh, indie wrestling is a lot like being a, a local band. Like, mm-hmm. what, you know, indie wrestling is to wrestling what indie bands are to like a, a major band. It's kind of the right. same thing. It's like, yeah, you're not, you know, famous, and you're not like on TV and everything, mm-hmm. but you're still doing the same thing. Right. So it, even like with indie filmmaking and all that stuff, like it's pretty much the same thing. You're, you're making a movie. You're just not making a blo- Hollywood blockbuster, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. It's pretty much like that. Um, so like w- which moves uh, that you perform took you the longest to perfect? And what was the first moves that you actually learned how to perfect, uh, to perform? Hmm, probably the first thing, like usually at every uh, wrestling school, the first two moves, three moves you would learn would be like a, a hip toss, an arm drag and a body slam. That may be a suplex, you know, just a regular old-fashioned vertical suplex. Okay. So probably the body slam was the first I learned. I know I worked on arm drag. And a lot of times, like, an arm drag is such a weird move because you would never do that in real life. You would never, like, right. you know, fight. Like, I'm not arm dragging. But, like, yeah, you pick someone up and slam them. But yeah. so arm drag took a little bit for me. Then I got it. And then you learn Japanese arm drag and all the Mexican uh, ones, like an Alita and you know, all that stuff. Right. Um, so those... Uh, you know, it was what I learned first. And then uh, what one I, I wanted to do, and I, I never really learned. Uh, I mean, I was been wrestling for a couple of years at this point. I go, you know, what? I want to do a top rope Frankenstein. I, I think I can do it. And like, it's weird because in wrestling, a lot of times, I mean, you just, yeah, you practice that training center stuff. I didn't really have anywhere at the time. And I was like, well, I'm just going to, I'm just going to do it. You know, and sometimes they say, don't do that in the ring if you practice it. Nice. But like, I mean, yeah, I've seen a Frankenstein the hundred times, thousands of times probably. So I know how it works. So I was like, I put the guy in the top rope and I was like, I'm okay, we're, I told him we we're gonna do it. And then I jumped and like, I knew what I should do. And then I knew what he would do as long as he catched me and went forward and it worked. So that's why I, I have been doing the top rope Frankensteiner um, ever since, because I was like, that's pretty cool. And it's like, yeah. you know, not everyone does it. And that like the suicide dive, I was so afraid to do a suicide dive, even though they're all over now. I kind of don't want to do it because everyone does it. But uh, I was like, ah, dive in another ring, I don't know. And I did it for the first time. So the guy said, well, just you know, throw me out and, and dive on me. I was like, okay. Nice. So uh, then I got that. And I was like, uh, once you get over the fear of that, that's fine. But I mean, mostly like all the moves, like I tell people, play a video game and make a create a character in wrestling or a wrestling game. And then whatever moves you like in there, that's what you should yeah. do. And like, just kind of learn those and, yeah. and do those. But like, uh, that's uh, some, some moves I like to do. I really like my, my finisher, the Night Crunch, which would be like... Uh, but, um, Finley's Celtic Cross is now Shams' White Noise, that move. Right. On Cassie kind of does Beach Break. Um, nice. That's like one of my favorites because of my finisher to do that. And then uh, nice. in recent years, I start doing the Superman Punch too because that's very easy and fun. And so, <laughs> I do Superman Punch, Kryptonite Crunch. Get it? It rhymes. Yes, Superman that's Kryptonite. awesome. I love that. So, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I love that. That's so clever. <laughs> yeah, it that's just awesome. came about too. Like, I didn't plan it, but I was like, yeah, I'm like, Superman Punch, right? And now Kryptonite Crunch. I was like, oh. 
<laughs> yeah. nice. So it just worked out. That's awesome. Uh, so is there something in the industry that you haven't done yet that you would, you have a goal to do? Oh yeah. So obviously you get a contract. That'd be great. Like yeah. with AEW, I'm not, not so much WWE. Uh, right. I would go to NXT, but AEW, uh, NWA, even Ring of Honor. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also really want to wrestle because I never did uh, a match anyway at the ECW arena in South Philly. Now the 2300 arena, the Viking yeah. Hall, New Alhambra, yeah. many names it had, but everyone knows the arena. Really. <laughs> I, I trained there with Jakarta, but I never got to actually wrestle a match there. Yeah. So that's high on my list of things to do. Nice. I mean, I'd love to go to Japan and stuff, but uh, on the things that are very possible, uh, wrestling at the East Arena would probably be right, nice. right at the top of the world. Nice. Well, that was my next question that you, uh, that you actually answered, if you would oh. ever like to go to the WWE or AEW or any other major promotion. So I guess I'll re- like kind of redo that question to an extent and ask like, what like how do you plan on like getting noticed by AEW? Do you have anything that you would like to do to actually try to get that contract? Uh, you know, it's it's weird because it's like you don't really know what to do and you don't want to like ask and beg. So yeah. like I, I don't like I heard like oh, just email QT and like well, I don't have his email, so how would I get his email unless I just you know I have to get it from somebody? Yeah. So yeah, you know, I just try to have the best match I can and maybe get a full video out. And then if I can share that and then get around, like I did a, a, a match, a, two, a couple matches for uh, Camp Leaf which is an IWTV, the independent wrestling TV. It's like the Netflix of into wrestling. So right. that kind of gets some traction. It's just like, kind of get your name out there. Like for me, it's always like, I can get to like almost the point, but not a certain point, like just to get more widespread and stuff. So that's why like, I, I got some uh, newer t-shirts and stuff to sell just to kind of get my name out there. Cause once they get a name out there, Hey, see this guy and he's pretty good, you know? And that's why I always had really cool gear too. Cause I figured if people look and see my gear and it's awesome, they're like, Hey, that guy's gear is so good. Let's watch him wrestle. So, I mean, it's a cheap way to get people's attention. Yeah. But like, yeah, that's why I like, like I would love to uh, just get the chance to be on AEW dark and, right. and it, you know, if it's not so good, it's not so good, but hopefully it'd be good. And then, like, Hey, bring it back and maybe get the contract. But even, you know, in NWA, I would love to be there. So it's not yeah. as big as it, because it's not on YouTube anymore, uh, NWA Power. I love that show. Yeah. So uh, that's why I love to be an NWA or Ring of right. Honor. I mean, WWE, like, I'm not, like, how they say, you know, over six feet and under 30. So right. probably not what they and want. With the way but, they're doing NXT 2.0 now, yeah. you know, it's one of those things like, uh, if you don't, if you aren't like a big hulking beast, uh, main event WrestleMania, you're pretty much not going to be guaranteed with the company. Yes, and if they're looking for that, like I, I can't give it that. I'm sorry, you know, yeah. I'm not earthquake and typhoon. So, right. uh, yeah, exactly. What about Impact Wrestling? Would you think about going with them? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I don't get to watch much Impact. I, mm-hmm. I just recently got Hulu Plus, and I don't know if it's on there. Um, but yeah, who, uh, Impact, like it kind of has that, like, I call it the TNA thing where I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. TNA, you know, but uh, yeah. they're just like Ace Austin's really good there, he's kind of somewhat local right. from the area. So uh, there's good guys in Impact. I would go to Impact. I mean, you can always use that as, like, let's say you're there and you don't really like it, but you get out and you get named and then you move up. And, I, you know, so I would go there. Obviously, New Japan, but that's in Japan. And I know that they have problems with Corona there. But uh, yeah, I would, I would love to go to Japan even if wrestle for like a random indie in Japan, you know? That'd be awesome, though. Yeah, that would yeah. be really cool. So uh, it, Tony Blackwell, uh, Anthony Blackwell, he's a good friend of mine, obviously a good friend of yours as well. Um, and you co-host uh, one of his podcasts, um, maybe even two of them. Uh, I know you're with uh, um, and I was cool at high school. Now I'm not sure if you do a uh, tornado tag or not, or if that's Yaz. Yes, uh, yes, we were both there. Uh, he, Yaz does some. Uh, he was on, and now he just does like the online stuff. So it's me and Tony and Brian. Nice. Brian's like the the, the mind. Uh, he right. does a lot of. He's been on tornado tag almost since. Well, maybe like they joined like a year in. Okay. But yeah, it's me and Tony since the beginning. Tony's like the mastermind. He's the Conrad Thompson. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah of our, the yeah. podcast network of IWP. Um, yeah. interviews with everyday people he does that one so yeah he does a lot of podcasts the wrestling ones for nail type podcast which I'm, I'm currently wearing the new logo shirt if you can nice. see it right, right awesome. there with, with Adina Steele and Kit Raff on it um, doing the German suplex nice. um, nail tag is a wrestling one obviously and that's every mm-hmm. well we report on Fridays I think it comes out <laughs> whatever um, <laughs> so and then we do Truth Beyond Illusion which is our kind of one where we talk about ghosts and nice. cryptids and UFOs and conspiracy theories and all that kind of like supernatural paranormal nice. stuff, which is, I think, just very, very interesting. Nice. And then we have Not Cool in High School, 
where we review movies and talk about video games and comic books and all kinds of relatively dorky things, you know, like toys and stuff like that. Just, uh, you know, yeah, all kinds of nerdy stuff. The head's not cool in high school. We just got a new logo for that, but I don't have the shirt. I just, I just got the shirt actually yesterday. So That's awesome. That shirt. is an awesome logo, too. Thank you. Um, Thank you. This one's in cool and cool. Now, with Truth Behind Illusion, uh, did you cover, like, anything going on with the Gabby Petito case? Uh, not not yet. I mean, it's possibly. We just, uh, we took a little hiatus for a while there, and we were okay. just doing the restaurant one because Tony had a, a night shift job, and it was hard for okay. him to do that with everybody, you know, work a night shift and yeah. sleep in the other day. Yep. So we probably will at some point. Anything conspiracy-like? Uh, uh, we did the, um, what was the girl that was in um, the, the hotel, and she drowned in, like, the water tower? They said she drowned in the water tower upstairs. I forget. It was recent. It was real popular. They had a, a documentary about it. Oh boy, I forget the name I can't of the host. Remember hotel. off the top of my head. I know what you're Somewhere talking about. LA. Yeah, it was yeah. it was real popular. We we did that, but like yeah, yeah. different stuff like that. Like that, we're actually gonna record one tonight about shadow people. So oh nice. Like, That's yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, and then we did, I did one on Clinton Road, New Jersey, which is supposedly this haunted road where all these things happen and like lights, weird lights are seen and cryptids are seen and uh uh. uh a, a castle that appears every Halloween and it's like, oh, okay, of course it appears on Halloween. So I, I just, I just find, even if you don't believe it, I find that stuff incredibly fascinating. Yeah, any, absolutely. Any ghost or Bigfoot or, or like, you know, uh, um, the Flatwoods monster and the UFO nice. cases and stuff like that. I love it. Nice. Tell Tony I said hi tonight. Okay, I will. Yeah, absolutely. So last question I got for you. Uh, do you have any upcoming gigs, appearances, or matches that you would like to promote to the listening and viewing audience as well as social media accounts or websites? Okay, so let's start with my, you can find me on Facebook, just search my name, Andy Henner. Uh, yeah. That's it, simple. And then at, I am on Twitter. I, I held on Twitter for a while because I still don't really care for it, but I, I will see there. It's at, it's at get some header. Get it? Oh. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, at get some header. That would be nice. my Twitter handle. And on Instagram, I think it's Andy, or just at Andy Header, maybe Andy underscore header. Just search my name and you'll, you'll okay. find me there. So that's how you can find me there. Um, I am at a wrestling show and I, I, I don't know where I put my phone here. Oh, duh, that's my phone. My iPad is over there. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm terrible, but I do wrestle for PPW. It's uh, PPW Entertainment. Uh, I just said for PPW Wrestling uh, on Facebook. We have a show. We run in Broadheadsville, Pennsylvania at a yeah. place that Alpha Junior actually runs. And it's like an MMA gym thing. They run wrestling yeah. shows there. And uh, I will be wrestling there. I think it's what uh, the October... Nice, oh, man. I'm terrible with dates. So anyway, PBW, um, Camp Leaf Frog. You can find that on IWTV. They, they kind of record the tape. They have some live shows. Um, right. CCW is going to be running uh, in, in Harrisburg area. Uh, they have a big Black Friday double shot show. So I will be at that this year. That is, uh, I believe, the 26th and 27th of November. Um, as, as I draw a complete blank, I should have should should wrote these down. But um, uh, Backbreakers, I know I won't be making the next couple of shows, but Backbreakers Entertainment up in uh, Scranton area, wrestle for them. Um, and then Outbreak Wrestling just had a show at Hamburg Fieldhouse. I don't know when the next show is, but just Outbreak Wrestling on Facebook or uh, the website. Uh, I, I did fortunately did not win the Outbreak Heavyweight Title. So maybe, <laughs> maybe next time, but it always, yeah. always a good show at Outbreak and MTN PPW. And then there's True Wrestling too. Uh, they're running a show in two weeks, but I'm not on that. But uh, just to plug some places that where I've, I've been, just uh, you know, anywhere in the um, northeast Pennsylvania area. Awesome. And then, awesome. oh yeah, Enterprise Pro Wrestling is where I'll be at this weekend, and that is uh, down by York, I believe it's Greencastle, Pennsylvania. I'm not sure, but Enterprise okay. Pro Wrestling. Just search on YouTube. That's I mean, this uh, weekend. Yes, that's uh, this Saturday. The, uh, yeah, I'm only like an hour from New York right now, and where really? I'm in Maryland, and uh, but I'm going to be in New York uh, this Saturday, mm -hmm. well, Friday into Sunday. I'll be in New York for a wedding. Uh, I, was, I was like, if you're that close, I'm, I was, maybe I would have stopped by, you know, get a ticket or something to see it. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. yeah well, I will, I'll send you the flyer anyway. But just yeah, so you know, um, yeah, I'll promote it yeah. on my Facebook page. Okay, so. cool. Thank you. Um, I, it's actually doing. Uh, I believe the guy's name was Dick Cariofi or Cariofi. They're doing a memorial tournament for them, but it's a six like a six man tag or trios tournament. So I'm in a trios team, and uh, I, I don't know how they're going to do it, uh, but a trios tournament this Saturday. So I'm looking forward to that because I've never been in anything like that. So that should be pretty cool. That would be awesome. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds like a plan. That sounds great. Oh yeah, and I forgot the sanctuary in um, yeah. uh, Hazleton, Pennsylvania. I, yes. I will be wrestling there. That's actually this Friday. 
So uh, the sanctuary, nice. just look up the sanctuary wrestling on Facebook. It's an old church and they turn into a wrestling arena. It's awesome. Nice. They have a uh, wrestling, they have dry shows, they have concerts there. It's a really cool venue. It looks awesome. So uh, I'm looking forward to wrestling there for the first time. Absolutely. Sounds great. Um, well, I thank you so much, Andy, for joining me. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It was, yeah. it was a fun time here. Absolutely. It, it, yeah, really was. Like the belts. <laughs> it was and a great time. And I absolutely love those belts. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Yep, anyway, you, it was fun. Yep. You have a great rest of your night. Okay. Thank right, you. Yep. You too. See you Bye. later.